Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Southbound Real Estate Sean Jones Show, where we cover everything on Rebel Hill with the South Green Rebels. As always, I'm joined here with Rebels head coach Sean Jones. Coach, how are you doing this week? Doing great. Doing great. I'm sure you're doing a lot happier now. Yeah. Got the milk can back on the south side of the river. Got the Defeated mi- West Green 29-14 to in the milk can game this past Friday night in the 50th edition of the rivalry. How sweet did that game feel? Uh, it was, well, first of all, you notice the can's not here. It's not here at the moment. No, it's uh, it's getting painted and we're taking a little extra time because we're about to run out of room on the South Green side, so we're trying to figure out where to put it. So, uh, but uh, we'll get it up here hopefully uh, in the next few days. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's great. It was great to uh, get the can back. Uh, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't play the best, but you know, you gotta uh, you gotta survive, and we knew it'd be a tough game. We knew we knew you know uh, how West Green was going to come in. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, they talk down there, it's their, their Super Bowl, and, and they don't care to go one and nine as long as it's us. And so uh, and, and it's quite hard to get these, these, these 15, 16, 17 year olds to understand that because when you watch film, they hadn't played well in our last three games, uh, the two films we had in, in the uh, last three games. Uh, but we, we tried to make them understand that they were going to bring it at you, and, uh, and they did. And they played, uh, West Green played well, hats off to them. Uh, they played inspired football, but, but you know, in the end, you know, they, they cut it to, to a touchdown there, and we went down and scored and uh, done what we should have done. So, so uh, we feel good with the win. I wanted to ask about your execution in the first half because they did mainly what they wanted to do, and that was control the clock and keep the ball out of your hands. That's why it ended up being such a low-scoring game and such a low-scoring first half for you where you barely had the ball for only about a fourth of the game clock. How were you able to manage your plays and be able to get into the end zone without having that many possessions? Well, I guess you'd just say it was efficient football on the offensive side of the ball because we scored when we had the ball. Uh, you know, it, it was the, the only thing there, you know, we had to muff punt. Uh, we feel like if we, we, we get that uh, punt there and we go in and score that, uh, you know, we feel like that, that we'll go on and, and take care of business. Uh, and I know people probably say that we got, uh, you know, they didn't score. Uh, but we didn't get the ball back the first half. I think they had the ball 18 minutes. Uh, we had it six. But hats off to our defense. You know, they they had, they had the ball 18 minutes the first half, had 86 total yards is all they had, uh, and didn't score. Uh, so the defense played really well. Uh, you know, they, we were trying to make some adjustments. They were doing some things that uh, uh, we, we didn't know later on after watching film. You know, they, uh, they kind of put a sneaky in on us. They, uh, they took number 88 and put him at tackle. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we kept thinking that was a tight end. So, uh, you know, they didn't have that extra lineman number that they're supposed to have. Uh, referees didn't pick up on it. We didn't after the game, but uh, after watching film. So that kind of gave us – because we couldn't understand why we couldn't get lined up. You know, we kept calling the strong call through the wrong side. But when you looked out there and you saw 88, you thought he was a tight end, but he was a tackle. They put nine or tight end on the other side. But, uh, again, hats off to West Green. You know, they got away with it. Uh, kind of confused us there. But uh, – but we dug down uh, and made the stops we needed to in the second half and done what we had to do. I wanted to ask about some of the game-changing plays that you had during the game because it's crazy how you end up winning the game by two possessions and they have the ball for so much longer than you did and you had the same exact amount of yards. 215 and 215 is what we had on our stat book. And you made some game-changing plays where you were able to stop them on fourth down twice on the 28-yard line, on the 19-yard line, and then we're able to have that big fourth down stop with about two minutes left to go in the game to seal it. Talk about those three plays in particular. You know, that's big. You know, that, you know last year it was a bit different. We, you know, we had the opportunity uh, to, to get the fourth down stop and win that ball game, and we didn't, and they kicked the field goal. And, and me and Coach Case talked afterwards. You know, he kind of was feeling uh, deja vu there, you know, uh, when, it, when it was, you know, they were driving. Uh, we were still up 29-14, but you're thinking, oh, it's fourth down here. They get a score, get another onside kick, you know, and go down. And so uh, we, we had to back in mind that something could happen like last year. But, but you know, all three of those plays were big plays. You know, we were uh, – you know, once we got that last fourth down conversion, we got the ball back. You know, we're trying to run the clock out. You know, we felt like – you know, our receivers are saying, hey, throw the ball. We, we felt like they, they weren't paying attention to us, and they wasn't. And we probably could have threw it for first down. But, you know, I told the guys, I said, look, we're trying to run the clock out here. We're up two scores. Uh, if we throw it and we overthrow or you and miss it, you know, we'd stop the clock. You know, uh, we look like a bunch of idiots. So uh, so, so we didn't do that. And we, we did have to punt to them there, uh, but we was, able, we was able to get off the field. So uh, it was just, just hats off the defense. You know, they played really well, played inspired ball. But, you know, we, again, you know, that's, tw- that's twice this year we had to be efficient on offense, you know, uh, mm-hmm. happened to us earlier in the year. You know, we're, we're, we're you know coming gap was was holding the ball and uh, and, and you know you had to score when you had the opportunities and so that's twice this year we were able to do that so we feel like if we could excuse me continue to do that 
then we'll be fine. But we got to take care of those opportunities. And, and we let some slip. I think you know, right before halftime, uh, maybe we turned it over on downs or punted, and, and we punted on the first drive of the second half. And you can't do that uh, when you're when you're playing, especially a rival game like that. And 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 again, even more important, a conference game. You know, uh, there for a while, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking there in the second half early. You know, I was like, wait a minute, this is a conference game. You know, we we got to make sure that we take care of the business, unlike the last few years where it wasn't conference. So uh, it was big to get out of there. Like I say, you know, uh, hats off to West Green. They played inspired football and uh, and done some good stuff that uh, that that uh, we was able to take care of. How sweet did the win feel to come off of their field after losing the can on their field last year? It's weird how the game lined up to be on the range two years in a row, but that's just how it felt. How good did it feel to walk off of the range this year after losing the can last year? You know, it feels good for the kids and community because, like I say, you know, said we're, we're more important. We're, you know, we care more about the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we want to win the conference. You know, uh, you know we feel like we, the, the culture in here has changed a bit. We're, we we got ambitions of playing for conference championships now and. Uh, used to, uh, you know, just winning those county games was big, you know, because that's all you had to play for. Uh, there was many years there that, you know, that, that was big trying to win those games and uh, and that's all you had to play for. But now, you know, we're trying to uh, – it's a conference game and that's the big part about it. And, and, as, and as a coaching staff, that that's pretty much uh, where it stops right there. And, yes, like I say, it's good for the community, good for the kids. They got the can back and all that stuff. And uh, you can brag, the seniors can brag for the rest of their life. And, uh, the guys come back and uh, brag till next year and, and all that stuff and uh, you know kind of keep that going but uh, but it was huge to get out there and be two and on the conference. There are always key players that I like to talk about each week from your team that shine the brightest on Friday night. There's three in particular I want to talk about this week. Jacob Susong, Nash Raider, and Gentry. I wanted to talk about Gentry having that receiving touchdown, that big stop on fourth down, and then Nash and Jacob getting in there and scoring two touchdowns. Talk about those three and how they were so important to your team on Friday night's win. You know, uh, you know, start at Trey. Trey, you know, Trey's a solid player. You know, uh, he was kicking himself on defense. You know, he he, he gave up the the, the, the long. Touchdown pass. He missed the coverage there, and, and he said, "Coach, he said once I saw the guy go, I tried to get the quarterback." And so he, and what, that's what's good that he was very, very upset about that. But you know, Trey's solid. Uh, well, he started starting last year at the end of the year, and he's been very solid for us. And come across there, and and, and feel like if we, if we got a block on the edge, he may have had another touchdown on the on the jet that he ran, and that would have been a long play too. But. Uh, uh, we missed a block there for him. And then, you know, Nash and Sue saw him keep doing – you know, the, the thing about – you know, I, I know people uh, – the last touchdown we, we threw to Dion there, uh, you know, we're trying to run the football. And, and I, I noticed on their sideline, the corners were being paying attention to the receivers. And I hollered up to Coach Burns and said, we're going to throw it right here. Uh, you know, Sue saw – and even after the game, he, Sue saw him doing what he's supposed to. But, you know, he didn't throw the ball in practice well last week. And, you know, Coach Burns was kind of hesitant a little bit to maybe uh, pull the trigger there a lot. Not that we didn't think he could do it, but, you know, big game like that, mm -hmm. you know, are, is West Green will show you something different than you'd seen before. And, uh, again, you kind of get conservative a little bit. And, and I told Coach Burns, I said, look, I don't care what game we in. Let's, you know, roll the dice. If you feel like we need to do something, let's see what's going to happen. Like I say on that pass play, you know, pretty much all of the coaches didn't want to pass it, but I said, we're, we're throwing it right here because, I, you know, on our sideline, I noticed where the corners were. And, and it worked out. You know, it, it worked out for the best Right there, so uh, so so those three guys play really well. Nash had a big play on the draw uh, that kind of got us out. You know, that's when they cut it to seven, uh, six points, and we go right back down the field and, and score. And that's when Nash had that big run. So, and that, that's one thing's different than uh, some teams we've had before. You know, sometimes even last year we might, you know, we got a little tight there when people got it close. And but the other night, that's twice this year. People's cut it to a touchdown, and we went right down the field and scored. That's big. And, and then also after the game, we realized, you know, we have, we haven't trailed all year. You know, so so uh, That's uh, the whole, every game, you know, we we've had the lead, and so uh, a little adversity there. You know, then you know we'll talk about a little bit later about Seymour. So what if what if we're down this week? What, how are we going to react? And, and I think we'll be fine compared. You know, based on what we've done uh, when people's cut it to a touchdown. Very efficient night for Jacob Susong. Also, only threw the ball ten times, six of ten, 113 yards, and two touchdowns. 60% completion rate, and when you don't throw the ball a lot and you try to establish the run too, it's important for that quarterback to have that efficient night to where he completes a lot of his passes. 60 to 70 is exactly about where you'd like him to be too. Oh yeah, and, and like, like I say, you know, we could have, once we get back studied film, you know, we had some checks that our receivers could have checked too, uh, the way they were playing us, and, and we was a little frustrated about that, but you don't see it really when you're in the game, you watch it on film, and so, so he could have had a, a better night, and, and the throws he would have made would have been almost 100 percent, you know, uh, catch the ball because it was just be a stand route or something out there. I checked that, uh, you know, that they were playing way off of her slots, 
uh, about 15, 20 yards, and we usually got a check for that. And uh, so he, did, he didn't see it a lot, and our, and our receivers didn't know where to check. So, uh, you know, we worked on that this week. So, look, if you got – take what they're going to give you. You know, we've preached that to him all year. You know, take what they're going to give you. You know, all quarterbacks want to throw it deep. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's just what we are. It don't matter if you're in the NFL, if you're in college. Uh, so, he's doing really well this year. We're, you know, we're, take what they're going to give you. Take what the defense gives you. Uh, a 10-yard pass may turn into an 80-yard touchdown. So, you, you, you got to look at that way. So, he's doing a good job leading the team. And, and doing what he's supposed to, you know, like I say, he's he's, he's not turned it over. Had two, he's only had two turnovers all year, and one of them was at the end of a half. So I consider him just having one, and uh, and he's done really well with that. The milk can's not in frame with us at the moment, but we can promise you it is back on the south side of the river. South Green gets a 29 to 14 win over West Green. More importantly, though, moving up to two and zero in the conference now. You got a week off before you go back into conference play. You got Seymour coming onto the or. Coming on to Rebel Hill this time, we'll go ahead and preview that in just a minute. We need to cut the break and get a few messages on screen, so we'll get a word in and be right back in just a minute here on Grassroots Media. Pizza Inn offers contactless buffet to go with JoJo's Family Feast or anything on our menu for carryout. We also honor birthday parties and cater to businesses and large events. We make it easy. Call us today. Pizza Inn Greenville. At Corner Pond, the friendly and knowledgeable staff has the experience necessary to help you out regardless of the need. Have an item of value you'd like to pawn or sell? Corner Pond can help. They pawn numerous items of value, including firearms, tools, ammunition, silver, coins, and much more. When you walk through their doors, you'll find well-stocked shelves full of electronics, gaming systems, fishing and hunting equipment, car audio and accessories. And don't forget about the room full of guitars and basses and amplifiers or their outside lawn and garden equipment. Corner Pond is a case knife dealer and carries numerous used knives as well. Stop by and let the friendly staff at Corner Pond help you today at 432 East Bernard Avenue, Greenville, Tennessee. Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Southbound Real Estate Sean Jones Show, where we cover everything on Rebel Hill with the South Green Rebel football team. As always, I'm here with Rebels head coach Sean Jones. So you got Seymour on the schedule coming up this week. I believe is this the third year in a row that yeah, you've played row, them. Yeah, yeah. You got them coming back to Rebel Hill this time. It was a pretty competitive game two years ago. The last time they came here is one of those games where you got up big in the first half. And they slowly reeled you back in in the second half, and you had to preserve the win. Last year, you went down there, picked up a big win against them when not a lot of people thought you would, and that's what kind of turned everything around yeah. for those boys on your team right now and led them to have the winning streak that they've got at the moment in regular season play. Talk about what you expect on Friday night and what your game plan is against Seymour. Well, we feel we got a very scary team coming in here, you know. Uh, and I know, I know people say, well, they're 0 6, yeah, but they're 4 A. Uh, their last three conference game, I, I really feel like they're not going to win. Uh, they, they got three tough games, so I feel like they're sitting there saying, hey, we've got a 2A school. They beat us the last two years. This might be our only time, opportunity to get a win this year. So, so we, you know, we're looking to – I've talked to boys all week, probably a desperate team coming in here, you know, because nobody wants to go over in the year. So, uh, they got a good ball club. You know, they, uh, I guess Northview, they uh, – back, I think, week three or week four, they, they decided to move their – uh, speedy receiver to the running back, and let me tell you what, if he gets the edge, he's gone. Uh, and, and they play they play hard, you know. Felt like they should have got the win last week against Cherokee, and Cherokee come back and beat them, I think it's 34-30. So uh, it's going to be tough up here. At least we got them on Rebel Hill. Uh, now, now, we feel like we can beat them, uh, but it's, I feel like it's going to be a tough game just like it was two years ago up here. So the scariest team to play is a team that has nothing to lose. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. That's what we've tried to tell the boys all, you know, all week now. You know, there could be another side of that story. Uh, after Cherokee, have they, you know, have, you know, have they uh, called it off and they're done? You know, that, that could, but more than likely, that's not. That's what you hope. You hope that they're just, you know, they're just like, we're done for the year and just, we got to go play this other game. And you hope that's the way they are. But I don't think so. I think they're coming here hungry uh, to get that one win, you know, because everybody wants to get a win in the season because, like I say, uh, they got three tough teams uh, at the end of the year uh, that, that, you know, again, you know, they may win, but it, it's very doubtful look, looking at their schedule and the teams those teams have played. So, uh, you know, Hopefully we're ready to play on Friday night. From what I remember the last two years, they're kind of, they're kind of a balanced offense, not really pass heavy, not really run heavy from what I remember seeing. What do you expect them to line up in on offense when they go up, go up against you? Well, this year they got a new coach, and they're running a triple option, you know. Okay. And we hadn't seen a triple option in a long time. You know, we've, we've practiced hard this week. You know, uh, Cherokee, uh, you know, their defensive end, if, if he does what he's supposed to, squeezes and take the dive, you know, 
uh, I don't think they do very well. So, you know, I, I told the boys, I said, you know, maybe I hope we come here and put on a, put on a clinic how to stop the option, you know, uh, who's supposed to get the dive quarterback and the, and, the, and the pitch. If you do that, they're going to have to try to do something else. So it'll be interesting. We, it's been a while since we've seen the beer around here, but they run it well. Uh, like I say, they ran it really well last week against Cherokee. Uh, and like I say, that was a marathon game. So we expect them to uh, do that. They got real good receivers. Number one is probably their best athlete uh, out on the edge and at the slot. You know, they threw one out there to him, and he went about uh, 50 or 60 yards last week. So, so we, we've got our uh, work cut out for us on the defensive side of the ball, and uh, uh, we'll have to play well. You've lined up against a lot of crazy offenses this year with Cumberland Gap and now Seymour too. Is it kind of harder to adjust to teams like that that run such a unique offense? Is that hard to game plan against? Well, it used to, you know, years ago when I first started coaching, it was because you never seen it. And, you know, I used to hate the wing tee when I first started coaching because, mm -hmm. no, I never knew anything about it. Uh, you know, now, you know, we see the wing tee and, and what Cumberland Gap does. And, you know, the, 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 the triple option has been around, you know, since the 70s and 80s, but people just kind of went away from it. They went more to the spread and stuff. So, uh, but, you know, luckily we, we got some older coaches here that, that have seen it before. Uh, and, and we know how to how to coach it up, uh, how you're supposed to uh, defend it. But you no, know, that, that's that's different when we can. Uh, but we feel like you know if we we play assignment football on defense, and we'll be able to stop it. What do you expect the line of, or what do you expect them to do on defense to try to limit your attack on offense this week? Well, they're they're going to go man coverage. It looks like across the board, and how you know that you put somebody in motion. If that guy goes with them, that's that's man coverage. Uh, they're going they're going to be in a forefront. Uh, looks like like a four two and. Uh, uh, they're going to send some backers a lot. They're going to twist up front, uh, try try to do some things to, uh, uh, you know, keep you keep you guessing. So so that's that's what we expected from them. Uh, but again, they're going to come in here hungry. And uh, and and then we even said it uh, this week. Coach Casey even said it. You know, at the end of practice, you know, we needed to look at it as uh, us being hungry. Also, you know, we, we you know we're coming in the season. Uh, you know, we got you know after this week we go back to conference uh, games. And so we got we got to get you know get uh, going where we can get back uh, to where we play South Green football. The rest of your schedule after Seymour is nothing but straight conference games, correct? No, we got Granger right, you do right have there. Granger, yeah, we yes. got Granger right there at the end, so uh, we uh, we got to, we got to do that. So once you know, once we get through Granger, the rest of our conference after this week's. But but uh, and the thing about it, we go we go next week, Happy Valley here, then we go on the road the last three weeks. So mm -hmm. so that's a that's a big deal too. So. Uh, you know, we're just going to take it one game at a time and see what happens. One thing I talked about with Coach Casey, Coach Dye, I don't think you have to travel out of the county until after week seven. Yeah, that's you know that's the way it was. We have not left Greene County yet. You know, we <laughs> won't till after next week, and then you know we got uh, you know we go we go down to Eagleton, which is down in Maryville, go to Granger, and then up to Hampton. So so that, that's cool. Even just three weeks out of out of the seven that you go to awesome. Greene County. Yeah. Now next year will be different, but the, yeah, you know, this year but you get uh, a good year this year. Yeah, and then you know uh, the way you look at it, if, if you, and what we tell the boys, if you can finish first in conference. He won't leave South Green in the playoffs, uh, so so we're looking at that too. So so we got some stuff, you know, uh, that we've got to play for, uh, and, and you want to go ten and zero. I mean, that's that's what the boys want to do, and uh, this is just another opportunity to do that. Uh, being non-conference this week, it's awesome when you don't have to hop on the bus. Seymour is hopping on the bus to come down here this week. What are your three keys that you need to carry out this week in order to send them home with a loss? Well, you know, we got to you know play assignment football and defense. That's going to be very very key. Uh, again, this week, you know, depending on how they play defense, you've got to take care of the opportunities on offense and score when we can. Uh, and, and then we've got to win the turnover battle, in which we, which we have all year. Uh, you know, so uh, I think we're still plus 19 there because uh, I don't think there's any turnovers last week either way on either side of the ball. No, see, we had interceptions. So we're back up to plus 20. Uh, so, so that's big. So we've got to win that turnover battle. Plus 20 is still amazing. Yeah, still good. Yeah. Has it ever been that high? No, uh, especially just through five games. Exactly. You know, just through five games, we're at plus 20, so that's pretty impressive. You might need to look back through the records and, or through, what do you call that, through yeah, the history and yeah, just see if you stats can. Yeah, stats and see if you can find that. But, yeah, that's – but eight of them are one game, so that's big. You're still plus 20, but still – That might be a record you know, also. Yeah, Most you, turnovers you look, forced in a game. You look – you know, you still look at the stats. If you, if you look at the – even at the end of the year, uh, you're at plus 20. That's really impressive. But through five games, that's real impressive what we, what we did so far. Hopefully the weather's pretty Friday night. It doesn't sound too pretty right now because I think I hear it raining. Yeah, what, you know, it's wheezy. It's going to be out here. It's just a quick shower. But, yeah, it's going to be great Friday night. Uh, so everybody come on out to Rebel Hill. Uh, we only got two more home games, so everybody come out and support the Rebels. As always, 7 o'clock kickoff time for your Rebel fan, Rebel supporter. Come out. Support the team as they play Seymour this upcoming Friday night. Coach, that's about all I've got for you this week. Appreciate you for sitting Thank down you. with me this week. Thank you all for watching this week's edition of the Southbound Real Estate Sean Jones Show. Look forward to seeing you next time here on Grassroots Media. Go Rebels, go Vols, and go Cowboys. But we got to get it together.